Korean foxtail the hare's liver. One evening, the dragon king in his beautiful palace at the bottom of the sea complained of an acute pain in his stomach. He rolled on his coral bed, surrounded by his queen, princes, and princesses, who knit their brows in deep grief. One evening, the dragon king in his beautiful palace at the bottom of the sea complained of an acute pain in his stomach. He rolled on his coral bed, surrounded by his queen princes, and princesses, who knit their brows in deep grief. All night long, he groaned continually, and the sea trembled with its resounding roars. Before the dawn of the next morning, he called his cabinet ministers into his presence and bellowed. I am seriously ill, and perhaps I must throw away my spoon, die. Last night, I tried all the medicines in my kingdom, but to no avail. Now who can cure my singular malady? The cuttlefish, who was the chief physician of the court, made a low bow and, after feeling the pulse of the dragon king, spoke, Your majesty will be cured immediately if you will only eat the boiled liver of a hare. Long live the king. Hum, boiled liver of a hare! exclaimed the dragon king. Well, who will fetch me the hair that I may have her liver plucked out and boiled for my medicine? I will strike the hair with the long sword on my nose, said the swordfish, and I will carry her between my sharp teeth as far as your majesty's palace. No! roared the dragon king, you must bring her in full life. I will clasp the hair with my long arms, said the octopus and I will present her fresh and pretty before your throne. No! Again roared the dragon king, your hard grip on her slender body will surely melt her timid liver. There was a heavy silence for a while. At last, the turtle prostrated himself before the dragon king, and struck his head on the floor three times, and then said, Through my amphibious operation I will carry the hair on my back and bring her safely to your majesty. Good bellowed the dragon king with a beam of delight, I remember that your grandfather, in his youth, ran a marathon race with a hare, and victory went to his side. Of course, you can travel both on sea and land. Go and bring me the hare. I shall neither eat nor sleep till I shall have eaten the hare liver. But, in order to make your adventure more successful, I will give you a lifelike portrait of the hare so that you may compare the hare with her portrait, and catch her without a mistake. The Dragon King ordered the painters at his court to draw a portrait of the hare, and they immediately began drawing. One drew her eyes seeing all the beauties of nature, one drew her ears hearing the songs of cuckoos and parrots. One drew her mouth eating orchids and other fragrant herbs, one drew her snow white fleece shielding the wintry blast and one drew her legs bouncing in the clouds that hung over high hills and deep valleys. Thus they finished painting the portrait, which looked exactly like a living hare with two eyes pink and round, four legs short and hind legs long, and two ears pricked up into the air. The turtle took leave of the dragon king, and darted up to the surface of the blue sea, and let himself drift aimlessly on winds and waves. After a long trip, he was glad to jump ashore, and continued his journey toward a beautiful mountain along a melodious stream. It was springtime, and all plants and moving creatures looked so happy and gay. The azaleas were breathing out a sweet perfume, the butterflies were flirting from flower to flower, the willow branches were swinging over the sapphire pools, the golden orioles were calling their mates and the homesick nightingales were singing a heart-rending song, the swallows were twittering by way of announcing their return from the warm south, while cuckoos and thousands of other birds were warbling in their sweetest voices. All the hills and dales were shining with pink flowers and silvery streams. Here and there, the evergreen bamboos and pines were standing like sentinels of virtue among the peach and apricot blossoms, and the cataracts, in various forms were falling from high cliffs with thunderous music. Enjoying this picturesque scenery, the turtle wandered up the hill looking for traces of the hare. 
After a while, he saw a crowd of wild animals run downhill squirrels, deer, wolves, bears, wild boars, tigers, panthers, weasels, monkeys, elephants, foxes, etc., but no hare was to be seen. The turtle stretched his neck and looked all around, and at last, his eyes found a pretty creature which resembled the portrait he had brought with him. Now he looked at this creature and then at her portrait, and he was sure that this was the animal he wanted. He was exceedingly glad at heart and, for some time, he watched the movements of the hare, who nibbled at fresh grass and vines, and leaped on the hanging rocks as she danced round and round. Now, the turtle cleared his throat and addressed her in a flattering speech, Good morning, Miss Hare. I have heard so much of your fragrant name, and wanted to see you once in my life. How happy I am to meet you here today in this beautiful spring. Hereupon, the hare replied, I have traveled all over the earth, and come across so many living things, but I have never seen such an ugly creature as you. Your tallest feet, your neck playing hide and seek, and your back, rugged and flat, these are all very funny. At first glimpse, you look like a wooden bowl. But who in the world are you? Ah! Don't be angry. I spoke in jest. The turtle, of course, was much displeased upon hearting the abusive words, but he controlled his temper and answered, My name is Turtle but I am better known as the Bialjubu. My back is flat, so I never sink when floating on the waves. My neck is long, so I can see far and wide. My body is round, so I can behave myself as an all-round perfect gentleman. Therefore, I am the hero of the water, and the captain of all sea creatures. I can proudly say that I'm unexcelled in both civil and military arts on land and sea. Miss Hare. You are very proud with your wide travels on the earth. But have you seen the bottom of the fish around the water palace of the Dragon King? No painter can draw the submarine beauty. If you ride on my back, I will show you all these wonders, and the Dragon King will treat you like a princess. You will eat all kinds of delicious seafood, and dance with the handsome princes in the palace. The hare was seized with a strong curiosity to see the splendors of the water palace, so she immediately jumped upon the back of the turtle, who, after a long and deep dive, brought her to the water palace under the South Sea. While the hare was sitting in an antechamber adjoining the audience hall, ready to be received by the Dragon King, an army of rude soldiers rushed in and bound her hands and feet as they cried, King's Order! King's Order! and they took her before the dragon throne without ceremony. The hare trembled from head to foot, for her astonishment was beyond description. When she looked up, her large pink eyes met a monstrous giant with a multi-horned coral crown glittering on his head, a long silvery robe of reversed fins shining over his carp-like body, two fiery eyes flashing on his brow, and a pearl scepter sparkling in his hand. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by hundreds of civilian and military officers. His huge mouth, with spear-like teeth grinning, and a long crimson tongue lolling down, seemed ready to swallow her in a mouthful at any moment. This was the Dragon King, for her quivering ears heard a thundering voice ringing out of the dragon's mouth. His royal message was repeated by a herald. Listen, you hare. The face, the robe, and the throne of a king or an emperor is called the dragon face, the dragon robe, and the dragon throne after my majesty. I am the great king of the sea, and you are only a small creature on the hill. Now I am suffering from an unusual malady, and nothing but your liver will cure my disease. So I sent the turtle and brought you here. You are expected not to regret your death. When you are dead, my servants will shroud your body with fine silk and embroidered brocade, and put it into a casket of pearl and amber. Your burial ground shall be in a beautiful garden behind my palace. Moreover, 
when your liver will cure my disease and restore my perpetual youth, I will have a shrine erected with a pretty monument to the memory of your extraordinary merit. You are more fortunate to die a noble death than to become the prey of a tiger or the game of a hunter on the hill. I promise you all these highest honors which are only due to a princess of the blood. You have every reason to be thankful instead of resentful. Now get ready to die with a happy look. Then, rolling his eyes to left and right, the Dragon King commanded his servants to split the belly of the hare and bring back her liver. All at once, the ferocious soldiers, who stood in the courtyard, rushed forward as they brandished their lightning swords, which they ready to plunge into her belly. It was a shocking bolt from the blue, and the poor little hare would have fainted away had she not had great presence of mind. She summoned her courage and wit, and spoke to the Dragon King in a clarion voice. Your Majesty, permit me to make a farewell address before my death. A humble creature like myself would gladly embrace death if it could restore the health of a noble king. Rather, I am grateful for your royal bounty in preparing my splendid funeral with such great ceremony. But I regret to say that, unlike other creatures, my mother fell in love with a star in the Milky Way, and conceived me of the celestial spirit. From the moment of my birth, I sick the morning dew and ate fragrant grass together with medicinal herbs only. By and by my liver became a wonderful remedy that will cure all, plus give perpetual youth to he who partakes of it. So all people on the earth beg me to give them my liver to eat. In order to get rid of this trouble to myself, I plucked out my liver together with my heart with mine own hands, washed them many times in a clean mountain stream, and hid them in a secret place on the hill. All unexpectedly, I met a turtle, and traveled on his back to your palace. Had I known your singular malady, I would have brought my liver with me. The Dragon King, hearing the story, and seeing the composed air of the hare, wondered whether her words were not true. So he roared again, How can you pull out your liver and push it back so easily? The hare was almost sure of her escape and answered, The heaven was opened in the hour of the rat, the earth was formed in the hour of the cow, the first man was born in the hour of the tiger, and all creatures came out in the hour of the hare. Therefore, I am above ten thousand birds and animals. Even the benevolent giraffe and the noble phoenix bow and sing of my creative work. Can I not play at such easy magic as pulling and pushing of a liver in my own body? The Dragon King was a very generous sovereign by nature. He remained silent for a while as he told himself, If I cannot get her liver after ripping her belly open, I shall have killed a fair creature in vain and there would be no one who might give me the wonderful liver. Judging from her earnest voice and bold looks, I believe that the hare is not telling a lie. I had better send her home to bring back her liver. So he gave two hundred sparkling pearls to the hare and spoke in a mild voice. Take this small present as a souvenir of your first visit to my water palace. Go in peace, and come back soon with your liver. The hare took the royal gift with a bow and, mounting on the back to the turtle, she started on her home voyage. After rolling merrily on the blue waves, the turtle tossed his fair rider upon the seashore. The hare could not help rejoicing at her escape from a watery grave and the stomach of the dragon king. So she danced round and round in all directions. Seeing this, the turtle ordered the hare to pick up her liver and return to the water palace immediately. The hare laughed heartily till her sides almost split and really tossed out her liver. What a turtle you are! cried she. Now I can understand the phrase as foolish as a turtle. Do you still believe that I can pull out and push back my liver like a toy? I only fooled your dragon king and his whole court in the hour of my imminent danger. After all, the malady of your dragon king has nothing to do with me. 
you kidnapped me with a fine trick in order to live yourself more happily at the cost of my life. So I feel very much like killing you, but, considering your good service in carrying me to and from the water palace through winds and waves, I pardon your crime and spare your remaining life. Now you go back and tell your dragon king to forget my liver, and kiss death with a glad heart, for no medicine can ensure an immortal life or resist death, which embraces a prince or a peasant as equals when the zero hour comes. The hare laughed again, and trotted into the forest, to be seen no more.